Hello everyone. Class six, chapter three, air around us. Before we discuss what is air, we can look into situations where we can actually experience the feel of air. Right? When we look outside, we can see that the plants are waving along with the wind. Now, what is wind? It is nothing but moving air. That is when air moves, we call it as a wind. Also, uh, when we are in a room, for example, uh, when we switch on the fan, suddenly we can see that our hair starts moving from one side to another, like in the as shown in the picture. Also, if your books are kept open, we can actually see that the pages are turning. Right? So that's also because of air. So we can actually feel the presence of air. Whether we are inside the room or outside in an open field or wherever we are, air is always around us. Now it is not necessary that air is moving everywhere so fast that we can actually feel their presence. But sometimes the air is not moving, but still it is around us. Okay, so what is actually air? We discussed examples like our books. Hair, also in the case of balloons, okay, etc., that showed very clearly that yes, air is present around us, which is the name of our chapter. That is air around us, and some of them we have personally experienced also. But what is actual air? Is it something that we can see? Can we see air? While, uh, for example, if we take an example of an inflated balloon, we can actually see the balloon, okay? But what can? But we cannot see what is inside the balloon, right? What is actually inside the balloon? Bear is balloon is actually filled with air, so we cannot see inside the balloon, right? That is that itself established that what we cannot see air, but we can only feel its presence. So, air is an invisible gaseous substance that can be felt. Okay, we cannot see it, so it is called invisible. It is a gas. It is not solid like your book, or pen, or eraser, or etc. Or and it is neither a liquid like water or milk or something, but is gas. It is like water vapor. Which is a part of this, which is also a part of this air. We can only feel it. It is not an object, so that we cannot see, right? And also, air is not made up of a single material. It is made up, mixed up of. Is it a mixture of many gases, uh, like nitrogen, oxygen, water vapor, etc., uh, which we will discuss later. Okay, and. We know it is required by living organisms for their survival, and it does not have any shape. It's not have shape any shape. It doesn't have any color or smell, but it has certain mass and weight. Okay. It occupies space and it fills all the space in the container, which is otherwise empty and seems to be empty. Like in the case of balloon itself, we can say that uh, we can actually see the outer part of the balloon, right? But what is inside, we cannot see. But actually, air is being filled inside the balloon, right? It is everywhere around us. That is, air is everywhere around us. It doesn't matter matter whether our hair or pages of book or etc. are moving or not. Let us prove it with an example. Okay, take an empty bottle. Make sure that the bottle is completely empty. Not a drop of anything should be inside it. Okay, now what is inside the bottle? You would say nothing because it's empty, right? Okay, fine. Now what we do is we take a beaker and fill it with water. Okay, half of the beaker is being filled with water. Put the empty bottle upside down in this beaker, as it's shown in the figure, right? That is the head portion or the mouth of the 
bottle is being dipped inside the water what should happen since you have said that the bottle is empty right so because you are saying that the bottle is empty so when i put this bottle in the in this way the water should actually enter into the be into the bottle right the water in the water should come inside the bottle right because the bottle is empty so it is simply simple logic right so surprisingly what happens is that not a single drop of water enters the bottle in fact while we hold the bottle like this you would actually feel the pressure you could actually have to exert a lot of work to hold the bottle in this position to hold the bottle at the same position something inside the bottle is actually pushing the bottle in the upward direction that is opposite to the direction we are holding so why is it so it is because bottle is not actually empty it is filled with air the pressure that we feel is actually because air inside the bottle exerts a pressure in the downward direction the problem that happens is air is not having any space to come out of the bottle okay uh, since uh, we have dipped the bomb mouth portion of the bottle inside the beaker the air can only escape the bottle only through that mouth portion right the only path for air to come out here is the mouth of the bottle but here it is completely dipped and is surrounded by water so air is not having any space to come out and since air doesn't come out water could not enter inside the bottle that is why not a single drop of water get entered into the bottle okay now look at the second picture now what we do is slightly tilt the bottle immediate thing that we observe is that there are certain bubbles in the area around the mouth of the bottle and soon the water starts entering the bottle also these bubbles are nothing but the air that comes out of the bottle so the bubbles they shows the presence of air that is soon after when we tilt we can actually see some bubbles that bubbles actually shows that the air is being coming out of this bottle and the space that air leave left in that bottle is being occupied the, by the water and that is the, and that is the reason why water starts entering into the bottle so the concept is that in the first case air was trapped inside the bottle so water couldn't enter in the second case that is in the second figure as soon as we tilt the bottle air gets some space to get out of the water which is showed by the presence of bubbles and these space get will get occupied by water okay so air occupies space and it fills all the space in the container which is otherwise empty and seems to be empty okay whatever space we are saying that it is empty it is actually being filled by air next uses of air it helps in the respiration of all living organisms okay respiration means actually breathing respiration is also includes the process of breathing we are actually taking in uh, taking in certain gases and releasing certain gases while talking also we are actually breathing so air is very important in the respiration of all living organisms no living organisms can live without air okay it helps in generating electricity by turning blades of the windmills uh, windmills can be considered like engines uh, that utilizes wind energy that is the wind for useful purposes that is when the air blows air moves that is called wind uh, the fan or the rotatory blades of this engine starts moving and this is used to generate to produce electricity okay this wind energy can also be used to pump water also 
it helps in seed dispersal dispersal of seeds seeds are what is seeds seeds are actually used to get new plants right that is to reproduce these seeds are carried away from one place to another by wind okay that is called seed dispersal that is seeds are being transported from one place to another by wind so that we will get plants in different areas that is in vast areas as seeds are being dispersed all over the place if it does not occur means what all the plants will be grown in a particular area only so that uh, so that this seed disposal helps in growing plants everywhere that is to spread greenery everywhere okay it helps in water cycle trans uh, water cycle you have already learned it also helps in water cycle as well it helps in photosynthesis and also supports burning or combustion photosynthesis means the process of making food food being prepared by plants actually the process of making food by plants uh, is called photosynthesis the plants leaves are actually making the food for this photosynthesis purpose they actually need a certain gas or certain uh, is air is being needed by the plants and it also supports burning or combustion burning so in order to burn something we actually need air which we will discuss later okay so atmosphere atmosphere is the layer of air surrounding the earth there are five layers of atmo layers of atmosphere which are exosphere thermosphere mesosphere stratosphere and troposphere okay it is the outer surface that is the air these air around us are divided into certain sections overall it is called as atmosphere and each layer is called as different names as mentioned earlier importance of air already said the atmosphere this atmosphere actually protect us from ultra rate ultraviolet rays that is the uv rays of the sun which may cause skin cancer and other health hazards you may have already heard about the term ozone layer right ozone layer is also one among one of the one part of the, among these layers of atmosphere that prevent the uv rays from directly coming to the earth and it blocks this uv rays to uh, being entering into the earth okay it this atmosphere also protects the earth from meteors that is some extra things that is present in the present in the space and this atmosphere also prevent it from hitting hitting the earth surface okay so next is composition of air now why we why are we actually talking about air because every organisms need air right whether we talk about human beings animals fish bird etc so we also know we are continuously breathing right similarly like or every other animals also animals or plants or any living thing need air which we already said in the case of respiration uh, but when we consider about fishes they also need air but they are actually living in water from where do they get air and how will you get to know that fish also need air while observing for example a fish in aquarium for uh, take an example we can see that some tiny bubbles are there these bubbles as already said indicates the presence of air inside the water okay bubbles actually indicates the presence of air so the most important question now is which are the gases present in the air or is it sing or the air does contain of single gas already said air is a mixture of gases air is not about single gas it is actually a mixture of many gases 
let's now talk about the composition of air that is how much part how much gas is present in which amount etc the air which we see is not a single gas it is a mixture of many gases it contains mainly of nitrogen oxygen and a small amount of carbon dioxide and some other gases like hydrogen hydrogen is there argon is there etc it also contains dust particles and water vapor as well okay here we can see in this picture this is the composition of air air contains maximum proportion of nitrogen a bigger part of the air is occupied by nitrogen and the next bigger part is oxygen which is comparatively smaller than nitrogen and other gases which i already mentioned like argon hydrogen etc are smaller in amount okay this includes carbon dioxide as well water vapor dust smoke etc the picture here gives just an idea about the composition here the blue part indicates the nitrogen which is the major part nearly 78 percentage is there uh, the red part indicates the oxygen which is comparatively less than the nitrogen and the yellow part indicates other gases as well like carbon dioxide water vapor dust and smoke particles are there and many other gases as well okay this is the overall composition of the air okay so next session we will in detail discuss about these different composition these composition of air okay Thank you.